Coming up, asking for money from the public is no longer a crime in Arkansas, although some citizens are being taken advantage of. Also, a former Bulldog football player is not letting his injury get the better of him. We'll also catch up with this week's sports report with Jay Beasley. I'm Cindy Mulvannon. And I'm Kay Kosselman. Welcome to the Bulldog Weekly. Welcome back to the Bulldog Weekly. Today's December 4th, 2017. Thank you for joining us. We've got a great show planned for this week. To start us off, correspondent Jackson Bullier is live in the studio with this week's World News. Thanks, Kate. A training school in Pakistan was stormed by a faction of the Taliban on Friday, leaving at least nine dead and 40 injured. Pakistani military reports six of the nine killed were students between the ages of 16 and 21. Three attackers entered the school disguised as women, and all three attackers were killed within the hour. The same group is also responsible for the Peshawar school massacre in 2014 that left 145 dead, 135 of them being children. That's all for this week's World News. Back to the desk. In national news, President Trump is under fire after retweeting three anti-Muslim videos on Wednesday. The videos depicted supposed Muslims assaulting people and smashing a statue of the Virgin Mary. Since then, several State Department officials have warned the White House of a potential rise in the protests. The Stewart Family Lights display is one of the most popular local attractions during the holiday season, and now the whole nation has the chance to get a peek. The family is set to be featured on the ABC Network show, The Great Christmas Light Fight, tonight at 7 p.m. The display features over 370,000 lights with an estimated 250 holiday inflatables. If they win, the Stewart Family will receive a $50,000 cash prize and deemed as the Light Fight champions. After the break, we'll investigate a new state law. Plus the final exam schedule. See you in 30. If you would like to see more from FHS TV or film, simply go to YouTube and search for FHS TV Fayetteville High to begin your journey. Requests for winter final exemptions are now available to all 11th and 12th graders. Juniors are eligible to exempt one final and three finals for seniors. AP classes are not able to be exempted. All forms must be completed and turned in by noon on December 8th. DECA is hosting a fundraiser at Chipotle on Monday, December 11th from 4 to 8. 50% of the proceeds will be given to DECA in order to support their upcoming fashion show. In order to donate, mention DECA to the cashier. The Bulldog Tree is now open to all students, parents, teachers, and clubs in the first floor Phase 3 office. All are encouraged to take a Bulldog number off the tree and help a student in need this holiday season. Gifts purchased for the selected student should be dropped off in the same office. Gift cards are able to be added to already purchased gifts if the student cannot be fully supported. For more information, contact Miss Sally and Miss Wood. The state of Arkansas has passed a law that justifies begging, removing the previous ban the state had put on loitering. Panhandling, the act of asking for money, food, or any other charity, is now legal for all citizens of Arkansas, no matter their situation. Although, the definition has been changed from charity to robbery by the public eye. Reporter Carter Gray has the story. In Fayetteville, Arkansas, over the past few years, the homeless population has increased dramatically. With the sudden rise, there's also been a flux of panhandlers. So how can you tell who really needs the money and who doesn't? Well, back in uh, October 2016, uh, in the city of Fayetteville, when we would in, enforce panhandling, not per se panhandling, it'd be more like soliciting. We had a soliciting ordinance along with a loitering ordinance. So in 2016, October, we received a direction from our city attorney that we would stop doing that. The Supreme Court had made a ruling that made panhandling, enforcing soliciting on panhandlers unconstitutional. So the way the law sees panhandling principally is that it's speech. And so under the First Amendment of the Constitution, it's protected. So 
um, the act of asking for money or the act of um, uh, re you know, requesting help is protected speech. There are many ways panhandlers present themselves in order to get public pity, which in turn means cash in their pocket. Everything from words on a cardboard side to the animal or child by their side matters. You know, or they take their baby out there to solicit uh, s sympathy from the public so they would get more money. What do I do with it? I'm saving it for to get back home because my ticket's going to cost me like 300 bucks. I mean, and to be honest, you know, I would have had it by now, but on some of the cold nights with me sleeping in the woods, you know, I've been had to get a motel and all that. Um, right now I buy propane and like little green propane tanks and uh, food mainly. Instead of giving money and not knowing where it will end up, it's recommended that people donate to organizations like Seven Hills or other local charities, which focus on giving the people what they need and not what they want. They could also give to Seven Hills. They could give to the Salvation Army, these places that uh, help homeless. You know, every, at, the money that they give to Seven, Seven Hills is going to be used to help the homeless. And uh, the money that they give to someone on the street corner, they don't know where that money is going. And you could be repaired in your car with a bag, a sack that you can give away, um, something like that, uh, with things like water and a toothbrush and toothpaste and other things um, that are, you know, really helpful and convenient for them. If you would like to learn more about how you can help the less fortunate in the community, please visit any homeless shelter around town. For Fayetteville High School, I'm Carter Gray. Since the law has been put into place, it has faced severe backlash from federal officials. U.S. District Judge Billy Wilson issued a ruling for a lawsuit against Arkansas on behalf of two panhandlers. He claims that the law only applies to beggars and not other lingering citizens, such as protesters or soliciting business customers. Judge Wilson has since stated that the section of the law was in violation of the First Amendment. This week is the last week before our semester exams, and the schedule has been released. The dates are as follows. On December 15th is the Zero Hour B Final from 7.15 to 8.45, and 8th Period Final at 2.20 to 3.50. All students are required to go to their 5th, 6th, and 7th periods that day. December 18th will be the Zero Hour A Final at 7.15 to 8.45, First Period Final from 9 to 10.30, and the 4th Period Final from 10.45 to 12.15. On December 19th, it will only be the 5th period final from 9 to 10.30 and the 6th period final from 10.45 to 12.15. And finally, December 20th will be the 2nd period final from 9 to 10.30 and 3rd period final from 10.45 to 12.15. After finals, we will be on winter break to celebrate the holidays with friends and family. We encourage everyone to finish the semester strong. Speaking of which, the spirit of the holidays is ringing throughout the community, reminding us the reason for the season giving. And the student body is exercising their right to give by supplying one of the greatest gifts of them all. Blood is essential in saving lives and the students are adding to the cause. The community blood drive comes once every semester where students get the chance to donate blood and potentially save a life. The idea behind hosting a blood drive here is to help save the lives of local patients in Northwest Arkansas and Southwest Missouri. Um, so it's become a Fayetteville High School tradition to have those two each year, one in the fall and one in the spring. Every time a student comes in and donates a pint of blood, three people in the community's lives can be saved. Um, we keep our blood local here in Northwest Arkansas, so whoever donates here, their blood will go to local patients at local hospitals. It's just a feel-good way to give back to your community without having to donate money. The blood drive was successful this year, with more than 150 students signing up to donate. The University of Arkansas Art Department is giving a presentation tomorrow during A&E. Professor Bethany Springer will speak on behalf of the department about their recent endowment and a potential future for the students in art. The presentation will be given in room 1503 in phase two. Applications for the 2018 Arkansas Governor's School are now available to all juniors. This free summer program will be held at Hendricks University starting June 10th to July 21st. The link to apply is on Hendricks University's website at www.hendricks.edu backslash AGS. If interested, visit your counselor for more details. The award-winning FHS Register now has a website that students can easily access. Check them out at FHSregister.com, where the content is updated daily. 
Up next, we'll send it over to Jay Beasley with this week's sports report. And we'll also discover how a former football player still remains a part of the team, even from the stands. All this and more coming up next. Now for the Bulldog Sports Report with Jay Beasley. I'm Jay Beasley and welcome back to another Bulldog Sports Report. There's a lot going on this week and there's been a lot of talk in the hallways about who the new athletic director and head football coach for the University of Arkansas are. Arkansas has hired Hunter Juracek from Houston to head up the athletic program at the U of A his first assignment to announce the new football coach. That guy is Chad Morse from Southern Methodist University. Fans have been wanting an offensive-minded coach, and Chad is just that. His offense has ranked consistently in the top 20 in the country, dating back to his days as an offensive coordinator at Clemson. FHS athletics are also busy, per usual. The wrestling team takes on Heritage Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. The match will be held up in Rogers. On Thursday, the bowling team will host Rogers High and Heritage at Ozarks Lanes. The girls varsity basketball team heads up to Branson, Missouri for the CNO shootout, while the boys team head the opposite direction and compete in the Conway Classic. Finally, good luck to the cheer team this weekend as they take on the best of the best in Arkansas at the state championships. These are being held in hot springs. Every athlete knows that injuries are a part of athletics. This year, one of our starting offensive linemen decided to call his career due to his injury. But that doesn't mean he's fully left the team. Here's reporter Sydney Mulvannon with more. The student section here at Fayetteville High received a new member a few weeks ago. Former football player Gunnar Sebastian went from the field to the student section to go above and beyond and become the ultimate sports fan. From football, I've gotten two injuries, two big injuries. And I tore my full meniscus on my left leg and like 70% of my meniscus on my right and I don't have any in my left so it's just bones rubbing together. And, and there's a man down. Gunner I, is that Gunner? It is yeah. Gunner who got twisted up I think underneath the pile. I don't think quitting was in his MO. It wasn't something Gunner would do but I think over time after getting so many injuries that just came along um, he was probably one of the most dedicated linemen we had on the team and definitely one of the most dedicated players. After suffering yet another injury to the knee, Gunnar is turning to the student section to continue his passion for the game. Gunnar shows up in the student section and he follows the game and he adds a different element to us. Like he's been on the field, he knows what it's like and so like maybe we can get a little more of what's going on. He still goes to the games instead of just like quitting the team like at all. Um, I know like kind of what's happening in the players heads because I played with them for so long and I remember playing with them for like four or five years kind of and a lot of everybody else in the stands is just worried about if they're winning or losing but like I know who's hurt and like what's wrong with them kind of and if somebody's frustrated or if they're not having a good game. Being a fan has brought him to still be a part of the team and allows him to still be invested in his teammates. Gunner continues to support his teammates and will go as far as supporting them at a potential state championship game. For Fayetteville High School, I'm Sydney Mulvannon. And that is what you call determination. As always, come out and support your dogs. I'm Jay Beasley, and this has been your Bulldog Sports Report. Back to the desk. Thanks, Jay. That's all we have for this edition of the Bulldog Weekly. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, FHSTV Bayfield High, for all the new shows and live events. And follow our Instagram and Twitter pages at FHS Bulldog TV to stay up to date with the news around the school and in the community. I'm Kay Castleman. And I'm Cindy Mulvannon. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Black,